What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and we're going to look at CDS option set labels for the Get Records action. So in one of our previous videos we looked at how to get the get the option set labels for uh, triggers in CDS. But what I'm going to show you now is how to get them if you are using the get records action. Now both of these things are slightly different and they work in a slightly different way which I'm going to I'm going to show you in this video. But for those of you um, that have never worked with option sets and, and things like that before, an option set is a list of options that have um, like descriptions or labels. So you could have something like uh, marital status being single, divorced, um, in a relationship, that sort of thing. And then behind the scenes in CDS is actually an integer value. So there is a, a, you know, a number value in the background that relates the, the number to the label. Now, typically in CDS or dynamics, uh, matching these two is, is a little bit tricky sometimes. Sometimes you need to query another table to get some of these values back. But what we're actually going to do today is we just try to get those values out because maybe we want to use them in something like an email that we're sending to someone. So we're going to show you how to use that um, for the get records action because as I said, it's slightly different than the triggers action. So I'm in Power Automate here. I've got a flow and I'm just going to create a manual flow with a manual trigger button. Um, the reason for this is that we don't need anything from a trigger. We just to, we're just going to use the get records action. So we just want to trigger the flow. Then I can click on new step and I can type common data service. Uh, oops, I am not in the right place. I need to be in a solution. I thought this was in a solution. Two seconds. Um, this problem we're not planning beforehand. Go ahead, uh, and we'll just create a new um, a new flow inside here. So we'll just do the same thing again. So we'll use manual trigger flow. So the reason I want to show this is because uh, all these triggers and actions work slightly differently. So we will want to use the common data service current environment connector, which is why I need to be in a solution. And then we're going to use the get record action, uh, which I can't see. Get record. Here we go. So the first thing we need is the entity name. Uh, I'm going to use the contact entity in this instance, um, just so I know I've got a couple of option sets. And then I need an item ID. So I'm going to switch over to my dynamics on my CDS instance. I've got this record here, Dick Grayson, um, and in this record we have several option sets. So we have things like uh, marital status, single, married, divorced, widowed. Uh, we have you know things like marketing materials, send, do not send. That's an option set, even though it's just got two options. Um, contact method, for instance, we've got those, and that's an option set. So behind each one of these is an integer value. And usually when you pull back the, the option set, that's the, that's the value you get. So I'm going to run it on this record. So I'm going to go up to my ribbon uh, that you can't see. Uh, and I'm going to use level up and I'm going to get the record ID and copy that to my clipboard. I go back to my flow and then we're just going to paste that in there. So again, level up, fantastic tool, works with Chrome, works with Edge Chromium, you should get it. Um, we don't really need anything in the in the expand uh, in the advanced settings because we just want to pull back everything. So we will hit save. Oh, actually, what I will do before I do anything else is I'm going to rename this step. Um, I'm going to rename it just because it's going to be a little easier later. Uh, I will show you what I mean. Um, uh, so just say get a record, uh, camel case it, and then we will test this. Um, no, actually, I'll add a compose step in first. Compose. You can tell I've not had my morning coffee today. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to choose uh, is it preferred contact method? Preferred method of contact. So as you can see, there's, there's one option here. So there are these other ones which aren't for method of contact, uh, but this is the this is the option set that we're going to look for. And we can also do uh, marital status if we really want as well. Um, marital status. So again, there's only one option for that. So we should pull that one in. And then we'll test this out. So we'll click on test. I'll perform the trigger action. We'll save and test. 
and we'll wait for this flow to run. Run the flow, click done, and the flow ran successfully. Uh, and we just need the string to there we go. So if I expand the compose action, we can see that we just have two ones in this. So that, that's that integer value behind the option set. There's not really that much use to us. So if I expand get a record and I go down to the body, I copy this out into Notepad++. Um, so we can kind of see that uh, we have loads of loads of different data in here. Um, and one of the things that we're looking for is uh, what was search for, uh, what is it, um, preferred, preferred, there we go, and uh, appointment type, contact method, there we go. So we have the preferred contact method of one, but we do have this one as well, this option here, which is actually what we, what we want. So the preferred contact method at odata.community.display v1 formatted value. So that's actually what we want to get out. Uh, we, we want the, the label out. We don't want the um, uh, we, we don't want the, the value. So previously I've shown you how to get this uh, using uh, I think it was like it's usually something like underscore name of field underscore label is what you're looking for but when you're using the get record um, in, inside the common data service current environment connector is what it's actually doing is it's doing an, an i think it's doing an odata lookup to that other table and pulling that value back so it's slightly different from the label uh from the from the you know you know name of field underscore label what we want to do here is we want to use this instead so we can use it in exactly the same way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that to my clipboard, and that's what I'm going to use um, later on. So if I click on edit, if I take away my actual status there, and what I will do is I'm going to insert a function or an expression. So the expression that I'm going to use is, um, is body. Um, so we're going to use uh, body, then we're going to open the brackets, then it's going to ask me for the action name. Now this is the reason why I took away the spaces inside the action name um, because Power Ultimate doesn't really like spaces. So you can actually do this if you still have spaces, but uh, where every space is, you just replace it with an underscore. But for ease, it's sometimes easy to just rename the step. So get a record. So what that's going to do is that's going to return me the entire body, but I don't want the entire body. I just want a single attribute from that body. So to do that, we can specify that. So if we do question mark, because um, that will say whether the field is optional or not. So if there's a question mark in it, it says this field is optional. It may contain data, it may not contain data. So it's always handy to have in. Then we um, we create some square brackets, and then we're going to create some single quotation marks again. And then we're going to paste in the name of that field that we want to get out. So what we've got is body inside the brackets. So the parentheses for the body, we've got get a record, question mark, and then inside some square brackets, uh, we've got, um, or some actual brackets, uh, we've got uh, the, the name of the field that we want. So we hit escape, goes in there, looks good. So let's hope that that works. Uh, I'm going to try and put that on a different line. Doesn't want to go on a different line. No, never mind. Ah, uh, well. So we will click test uh, and we'll just save and test it again. And then we'll run this. So what we should see is we should see the number one followed by any. If I've done this right. If I've not done this right, we won't see that. One, any. There we go. So what, what we can, uh, the other thing we can do is uh, if I go and change this from any to say phone and um, we save it and then we go back to the flow and we run the flow again and we'll just trigger this again Hit run flow there we go uh, and there we go with three phone so you know that one is any three is phone um, and we can see that both of these values are updating, so we know that that's getting that label out. So I hope this was useful because a lot of people don't like just using the, the integer values when they send them through. 
um, and you know you can do things like you can put uh, if statements in and say you know if this value is like you know one then write this into a variable and then use that variable in your email or whatever else you're doing but seeing as the values are already there we can just query it and just get it so it uses a little bit of expressions a little bit of function language to actually get what we need to but it does give you a lot of value back by just being able to just go in and just go pan this and then we can have everything in a single step so i hope this video was useful to you if you did find it useful if you could hit like and subscribe uh, that would be much appreciated if you're not already subscribed uh, if you could share this video with your friends like harder other people that don't know that you can still query these things just as you see it doesn't come back in that dynamic content so it's a bit hard to um for, for a lot of people to know that you actually do get that value you just need to go off and, and return it and, and pull it back so so yeah um i hope this video was useful uh, and i will see you next time